Hi everyone, my name is Ian Camacho. I am the product designer here at GitLab that focuses on the package stage. Today for the UX showcase, I wanted to share a couple of the features that we're working on around registry customization. For a quick reminder, the package stage is the part of GitLab that helps manage dependencies. That includes bundling up these dependencies, storing them in the relevant registry, and then distributing them out. And distribu distribution can include sending a package to an engineer's local environment, into a pipeline to help with a build, or even image tags being sent out into the infrastructure side of things. Today I wanted to share a few examples of how small changes can have a really big impact. We're working on several small MVC style changes to the registry configuration that will help enable our users. The focus of our work and the ones I'm going to share with you really allowed for organizations to set their registries to act in the way that's best for their organizational needs while also helping them manage their storage costs. The first thing that I wanted to share with you was expanding the cleanup policies to include packages and other dependencies. This will enable our customers to manage their package registries, storage costs by automatically removing unneeded assets. From a user goal, we wanted to create a tool that allowed admins and maintainers to identify and automatically remove packages and other stored dependencies from the registry, all with the focus of helping them manage their storage costs. I've shared what we worked on before with the cleanup policy for image tags before here at the showcase. And I'm really excited because we can take all of the learnings that we got from doing that work, the research, the actual building of it, we've gone through two iterations, take all of that information and port it over to the different packages and other dependencies with a lot of confidence. The goal is to create an automatic tool that will regularly remove unwanted dependencies based on a variety of factors. This could include the package name and version, the amount of time that package has been in the registry, and historical data of how the package was built, like the branch commit, MR, etc. The next steps is going to include a technical evaluation of the cleanup policy for image tags and see what can be ported over to the package side and what needs to be customized. Once we have that information, we'll be able to see how much of the design needs to be adapted or changed. We're hoping as little as possible and then we'll be able to move forward from there. One of the other things that we're working on right now, which kind of flows into the post MVC idea, is going to change the focus of the cleanup policy from being associated with the package's metadata to move more of its usage data. When we talk to our users, one of the things that they really wanted to see in the next version was to determine if a package or dependency should be removed based on the amount of time it's been since it was last pulled. For example, they would like to be able to say, this package can be deleted because it wasn't built from the main branch and nobody has pulled it for the last 30 days. That usage data aspect ensures that they're not accidentally deleting assets that they need or are being used regularly. So it'll be really exciting and really make that kind of feature lovable for our users. The next feature I wanted to talk about included letting organizations determine how their registries will handle package duplicates. Um, the user goal is to create a really easy way for admins and maintainers to set a policy of how their registry should respond when a duplicate package is attempted to be published to the registry. For a quick review, a duplicate package is an asset that has the same scope, same name, and same version. We've talked to a large number of organizations and gotten some varied responses. And we've discovered that these variances come both from the package format itself, so if it's NPM or Maven, et cetera, or from the type of organization or DevOps setup that they have can alter how they feel about duplicate packages. As an MVC solution, we wanted to create a setting that would allow the organization to determine if the package registry at a project level would allow for duplicate packages or not allow. One thing we did add based on the research was also the ability if, a, if an organization is determined not to allow duplicate packages, to add exceptions. The story that we heard over and over again when we had these conversations was that we don't want to allow duplicate packages, except, for example, Maven, you build several snapshots that get added and it's used as part of testing. So we want to allow snapshots without having to create new versions of them, but not allow duplicates in any other form. So we added that regex field to make those exceptions. We're working on the designs right now in 13.5, and then moving forward, we're going to start with the implementation. 
one of the post MVC ideas was also to expand on the granularity available so that organizations can determine these kinds of rules down to the package format level. Because again, we heard from them during the research that different package formats, they have different needs and we wanna make sure those are available for them. The next setting I wanted to talk about was the read only mode. We want from a business perspective for customers to be able to create immutable registries that can be pulled from, that cannot be updated or added to. And from a user goal, we wanted a really easy way to turn that read only mode on and off and make sure that it was really clear what they were doing. So from the UI, we added at the project level the ability to enable or disable the read only mode and then kind of explain it inside of the UI. We heard that the requirements for read only mode include that no new package should be allowed to be published to that registry. No current package can be updated inside of that registry and that users and their subsequent customers can still pull packages. The example that we heard around this was that we have a team that is doing research around certain types of technology. And at the conclusion of their research, they wanna be able to upload and publish those packages so that other teams and other research teams even can use those packages and everything can be built upon. However, we wanna be able to lock it down to ensure that nothing can be changed, nothing can be added, et cetera. We've worked on the design and it's pretty straightforward. So the next thing is for the technical exploration as well as validating it with some of the customers we talked to as well as different customers who may have this need. The last thing I wanted to talk about was file size limits. As storage and consumption has been a big priority for us here at GitLab and for our customers, file size limits really help organizations determine um, some restrictions on their file sizes in order to help them with their storage costs in general. We wanted to give instance level admins a way to set package file size limits to help their organizations manage their storage costs. And from a user goal, we wanted to make it easy to be able to set those file size limits based on the different package formats. I like this story because this actually didn't start with design. This was uh, back in engineering, we needed to implement the feature for file size limits. It came up that at the GitLab admin level, we should be able to set those limits for the different tiers of our product, as well as instance and self-hosted should be able to set those restrictions themselves. So the UI and the idea came from backend and then um, I came in and we worked together on it. And that's always a really fun story. Um, and a really fun experience for me. So like I mentioned, GitLab needed to introduce file size limits to help customers better manage their package related storage costs. The investigation concluded that customers had wildly different needs and expectations and the different package formats also had wildly different requirements and needs. Working with the backend, we were able to first create an MVC that is a very light UI that enable GitLab admins and instance level admins to adjust the file size limits for their organizations. And we added the tab effect to be able to determine the different tiers and set those limits as well. So we created a dynamic way to set these limits that was easy to understand and easy to reference. Thank you so much. That's what I wanted to share with you today. Um, I also want to send a special thanks to Tim and Steve and Nico and the rest of the package team for all of your help making these really small changes that really help customize the experience of our registries to match our organization's needs. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.